Okay, plant friends, we got a semi-hydro update for ya. Bloom and Grow YouTube Show. So a few months ago, I did my first time semi-hydro setup video for you guys where I set up several of my plant babies in semi-hydro. Plant friends, I can't believe how much fun and how successful it's been. My plants that I've put in semi-hydro are thriving and they've done so well that I'm actually converting more and more plants to semi-hydro. So you guys asked for an update video to see. So we are about... October, November, December, January, February, March, April. We're almost seven months into my semi-hydro journey and I'm loving it, plant friends. If you're home, if you're quarantined, if you're staying home for a bit, or if you just like want some new project for your plant life, this is something I would definitely recommend because I'm just learning a lot about plants through the act of growing in this type of medium. So for those of you who didn't watch the first video, go back and watch my setup and go listen to the episode that I did with Kay from In Rooted Love on Instagram. She is the semi-hydro expert. She has like hundreds of plants in semi-hydro. And our podcast episode, she breaks down what semi-hydro is, what these cocoa puff looking like leca balls are, um, and she breaks it down. So this is kind of just a accompaniment to the podcast and the first video. But... I figured I'd show you, I'd give you an update on the plants that I've rooted, and I'm going to root one more plant in LECA for you today. Um, so, semi-hydro is growing plants without soil. You use these things called LECA balls. There you go. Um, they're puffed clay balls that essentially... Um, you pot plants up in these little containers with the LECA, and then you put the pots in a reservoir of water, and you sit that pot, the bottom third of the pot needs to sit in the water, and the balls wick the water up. So we go into that in the podcast episode. So go listen to that if you want more. So my first experiments were this orchid that I've been kind of bringing back to life, um, and this pilea. So I had some et etioliated pileas, um, meaning they were leggy, they stretched towards the sun, and I knocked this over and I accidentally chopped my pilea off, accidentally. And Kay said I could simply just put the pilea that I actually accidentally lopped off in semi-hydro and that it would root, and I was a little skeptical. I was like, it's literally that simple, and it was. So let me show you the insane root system that has grown on my very happy pilea. So seven months in, this thing is doing so well. It's grown so many roots and it's really happy. I mean, I planted it a little wonky. If you see, uh, also my friend gave me this pot. Do you see it? Focus, sometimes I wet my plants. But I planted it a little wonky so it kind of hangs over the side of the pot but it's doing super well. I've got it um, under one of my grow lights and it's totally bouncing back um, and it's amazing. So what I did was for the first month, I put this in water, just plain water. And then the second month I started fertilizing, which I'm gonna show you because the thing with semi-hydro, since there's no nutrients in these LECA balls, you have to put the nutrients in the water that the plants live in. But the cool part is, you only switch the water out once a month. So I'm finding, because I was traveling so much last year, this is an amazing way to grow plants for people who travel because you're literally just switching the water out like once every three weeks, once a month, checking in so you can leave and not be stressed that your soil, your potting medium is gonna um, dry out, which we have found has been great. Now, the big thing that I'm super excited about is this orchid. This orchid is doing so great. And if you can see, can you see the new roots that have grown? I gotta tell you, I've been waiting two years for this orchid to bloom, which was the reason why I put it in semi-hydro because I thought maybe it would bloom and like do better in semi-hydro. And these roots grew, this root here and this root here. And at first I thought that they were a bloom spike. And when I thought it was a bloom spike, I like had a heart attack and then I realized it was just more roots. But so that was a little disappointing. That being said, the roots, I don't, I don't think you can see, but within, there are a ton of roots growing within this net pot. So 
This orchid didn't have many roots. If you go back and watch the first video when I put it in and the roots have definitely grown. There was actually a very long root growing out of the net pot and I accidentally broke it. Do you get this? That I'm like really clumsy. <laughs> um, but this orchid is doing really well. It's grown a full nother leaf. It's grown all sorts of roots um, that look really healthy and happy. So I'm feeling great about growing these guys in growing medium. Then I had a plant. This was a troublesome plant for me. I had taken some cuttings from this philodendron Brazil that we had, and I wanted to have it trail down on top of our bookshelf. Um, and I just kept forgetting to water it, water the soil. So I thought, hmm, maybe I'll take some cuttings and try the semi-hydro method on this bookshelf because then I only have to swap the water out and it's done really, really well. I still sometimes forget to refill the water reservoir because I feel like plants on top of the bookshelf like always get forgotten, but it's still growing great. You can see all those juicy roots growing out of it. And I simply just fill this reservoir with the water that I need and it sits up there and it's happy as a clam. Another one I wanted to show you that I just did yesterday, it'll be in another video that I did for repotting, is this new pilea. So um, basically all of my pileas, I didn't put them in the right light, lighting setup. Um, I had a grow light and I had my pileas all too far down from the grow light. So although the grow light was great, the pileas needed to be closer up to the grow light, the grow bar that I have in my bookshelf. Um, since I put them down, they all stretch towards the light. So I'm going to root another one for you guys right now. Except I realized I forgot the pilea, so let me go grab it. So this is my wonky guy. <laughs> He's crazy. I got this plant steak that I was trying to like make him go in, but it just, I'm not a fan. He's taking up too much space now because he's so wonky. I mean, some people I know let it just be wonky and grow all over the place, but I got too many plants and I got limited space in this grow light bookshelf. So, um, plant friends, it's literally this simple. This is literally all you have to do if you want to save your little leggy guy. So I'm going to, these are, um, these are from Mod Sprout. They're an they're a podcast sponsor. These are the best little snippers. I love this little guy. It makes me stay, um, the little uh, what's this called finger holder just makes it stable, and then you can um, they stay together like that. Anyway, I'm gonna snip here. Then I've got so. If you're interested in doing this, I have all the stuff I used to set these guys up in my Amazon storefront. I bought these net pots. This is what you put the LECA in. So I want to not have the situation that happened with my other guy. I want him to grow upright. So I'm going to stick him in the pot like this. And then um, I have my LECA balls. I washed these already. So you're supposed to rinse the LECA balls because they're kind of dusty when you get them. They smell kind of sulfury, but it's cool. Um, you know what? I just broke. Oopsies. He just snapped in half, so we're going to go like that. Um, and then I'm just going to backfill. So it's you literally, like, this is it. This is what you do. And these are pre-rinsed, so I rinse them off camera because who wants to watch me rinse LECA balls? And that's it. So now he's going to sprout all sorts of roots. So the first month when you're rooting, you do not put any nutrients in the solution that you root in. So what I have found, one trick that I found in the last seven months, it's a little tricky to like nail how, if you have a see-through pot, um, exactly where you fill the water. So what I've started doing is, here's my little watering can. I hold the pot up like this and then I fill the reservoir and I kind of eyeball it this way. I just feel like I can get a better eyeball on what a third is. So I have to take displacement into account because obviously when I put this in, the water is going to rise, but I fill it to just about where I think one third oopsies, of the pot is going to be. I'm so clumsy, plant friends. Um, all right, and there we go. Look at its cute little haircut. 
I love these pots. I got them for like $3.99 at Marshall's a while ago, and they've been so fun. So now my, they're like little best friends. I feel like if you have certain plants that are in hard to reach places, or if you're traveling, um, this is just like a really great setup. So um, the other thing I wanted to do is show you guys how I uh, r uh, clean out and re water all the plants. So what I'm going to do is, um, the, the one thing that you notice, and I'm using organic fertilizer, um, there's buildup at the bottom of the pot and that's very normal. And Kay, I talked to her about it this week. Kay said also it's very normal for algae to grow at the bottom of the pot. So once a month when you do switch the water out, you really do want to give the pot, uh, the reservoir pot, a nice little clean out. So whatever you're putting in there has like a fresh opportunity to hydrate the plant because she said if too much algae grows, then the algae will start taking the nutrient solution and we don't want that to happen. So um, I am actually going to go off camera, rinse all these pots. I'm going to take out my new plants. I'm going to rinse all these pots and then I will show you how I um, do my fertilizer. Okay, so I gave these um, pots a nice wash. So I use Espoma liquid fertilizer on all my plants, um, on my plants and soil, and as my nutrient solution for my plants. So they have this super easy, um, this is why I love them so much. This is how the fertilizer comes. It's liquid. It's not like little granules that you have to like mix in water. Um, and all you do, so this is their or orchid fertilizer. So I use their orchid fertilizer, their bloom, orchid bloom fertilizer. Orchid Bloom Booster on the orchid, and then I use their normal houseplant fertilizer on everything else. So fertilizer can get like messy and annoying, and this is why I like this one. So you've got the bottle, all you do is you flip it over, and this little cap fills, and that's one dose, and then you put one dose into a quart of water. So I use these quart jars. Um, for semi-hydro, you put one-fourth of the solution in the water. So the, the ratios you have to remember is the plant needs to sit one-third of the bottom, needs to sit in water, so one, that's one-third, and then you're putting one-fourth of the so normal fertilizing solution. So I'm just going to put the full dose in the spoon, and then I'm going to do about one-fourth's worth, and then I'm just going to pour it back in here. Oh my God, I can't believe I just successfully did that because <laughs> I'm so clumsy. Um, I'm going to give this a mix and that's my solution. So I'll put what I need in here and then I'll use the rest of the orchid solution to water my other orchids that I still have in normal orchid bark. I like that it kind of feels like mad science, you know? It's like, ooh, I got to measure, measure, measure. So it looks like that. Maybe a little bit more. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's it, plant friends. I'm done. This is my cute little orchid now. I don't have to look at this thing for a few weeks, which is really nice. They have indoor houseplant fertilizer, which is what I've been using on my plants for the last couple of years. So once again, I'm going to do the same thing. I just filled the cap. I'm going to put it in my spoon. Put a fourth of the solution. Ah, see, not as, not as graceful on that one. Um, that's okay. I'll clean it up later. Also shout out, um, this is the RT One Home Potting Tarp. It rolls up like a little yoga mat and then I put it out because I'm so messy. <laughs> so I'll link in the bottom if you guys need a, a potting tarp for your indoor activities. I've been using it a lot as I've been home a lot lately. Yep. Fabulous. One other thing Kay said, um, sometimes, I don't know if you can see on this one, uh, the Lekka balls sometimes get um, white powder kind of on them and it's just, the, it's like buildup of the calcium and other like nutrients in the water. So whenever you refill your water containers, like what I'm doing, in addition to washing the containers out, you're gonna to wanna to do a flush. Just keep the, put the pot with the LECA under your faucet and let water just kind of flush out those LECA balls because they do have buildup sometimes.
So for this one, because this pot actually sits very deep, I'm, oop, I'm going to put this in there and then eyeball the one third from here because that looks about right. Maybe just a little more. Okay. So that's set. You can have that drape over like that. Um, this guy I just set up, so I'm gonna leave him because he's still rooting in water like the other Pilea. And we've got the orchid, so we're good to go. So now I have some like little fertilizer, very lightly diluted uh, water that I'll just water the rest of my plants with today. So that's it, yeah. Um, troubleshooting, I talked with Kay. The pretty much only other thing was make sure that you rinse the actual net pots that the plants are in so you can get all of that white buildup off of the semi-hydro. But it's working for us so far. It's been really fun. Um, it's always fun to find a new like little thing to experiment with. So I think slowly but surely, I'll probably just keep switching stuff over. Now I've got one, two, three, four, five plants. I went from two plants to five plants in semi-hydro, so who knows for the next checkup. Um, if you are interested in trying this on your own, I have links to the net pots. The net pots and... This is the box of LECA that I got, which I also have linked on my Amazon storefront. It's just a little box. I keep it under my uh, sink and it comes with a bag of LECA. I mean, I think I'll have LECA for a while with this. Um, I've also linked all of my fam favorite Espoma products um, in the show notes as well. All of these fertilizers are there. And if you need soil, they also make amazing soils. Um, and I think that's it, plant friends. So until next time, keep blooming and keep growing. <laughs>